Pat Love here from Love Healing Hearts. We're going to talk about dating. Some of us are dating God and flirting with the devil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know some of you are probably sitting up there saying, I know she's tripping. But let me tell you something. I know that probably every single one of you, including me, have had relationships where someone cheated on us. It doesn't feel good. It hurts, doesn't it? Especially if we are either married to the person or totally committed, in love, infatuated, whatever the case may be. The bottom line is we don't like it when somebody tells us we're the only one and we find out that we're one of very, very many. Hello. You know you don't like it no more than I do. So how do you expect God to be okay with that? And I know you're probably saying, well, what is she talking about? How am I dating the devil? Well, here we go. When you are going to church on Sunday or Sabbath, whatever day you go to church, and you have sat in that church and raised holy hands and put your little money in the bucket and, and, and sat there and, and, and gave the right hand of fellowship and hugged and, and greeted the other folks in your church and, oh boy, it's a wonderful day and you're dressed all fine and dandy. But some of them don't know what you were doing the night before. But God does. Some of you may have just gotten off the internet that morning watching pornography. Some of you may have just got through rubbing on your girlfriend's boobs the night before, hoping that you could score. Others of you may have been doing a little too much drinking, got a little carried away, might have even been pulled over for a D, what is it, a drunk driving ticket, whatever. I can't even think of the name, the words they use. But listen, this is what I'm talking about. When you are totally sold out, you don't play. You don't even tinker with some of the things that could possibly draw you away now, do you? You won't do it. Just like some of you men may have an old girlfriend that keeps coming around, but you got your heart set on another, another woman. And you want to marry that woman because you really love her. So what you make sure the ex knows is that she's not in the, in the ball game anymore. You make it perfectly clear. You don't call her. You tell her she needs to leave you alone. I mean, you even tell your, your present girlfriend or fiancé about the ex so that they don't misunderstand what's going on because you don't want to lose a good thing. So you don't even tinker with some of that mess from the past. Even if you've tasted of the fruits and the fruit tastes good, but you don't want to miss, you don't want to miss what you got up now. You don't want to mess up a good thing. So you won't reach back and play with that. You're serious. You are totally committed. And some of you women the same way. You let it be known if you got to get a, a, a restraining order, you let it be known. Ex-boyfriend needs to hit the road, Jack, and don't come back no more, no more, no more. Well, because you have got something that's worthy of saving yourself for. You've got a good man. You got, you're in a good relationship, and you don't want to mess this up because you're hoping that you get to go down the aisle with this one. You hear me? So you do everything to stay away from the ex and to make sure the ex stays away from you. But what about God? Why is it that you have a father in heaven who is totally committed to you, who sent his son to die on the cross 
for the forgiveness of all your sins. But yet, you take it so lightly that every time you get a chance, you and your honey bug gots to get it on, baby. And God just gots to understand. He doesn't have to do a thing. He ain't gots to understand nothing. Because he requires righteousness. He requires faithfulness. Yeah, you can have a boyfriend or girlfriend. Yeah, y'all can date. But listen, when you go against the laws of God, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not fornicate. Y'all know what fornicate is. You don't need the dictionary to tell you that. Yeah, I'll tell you what it means. It means y'all shouldn't be screwing around when you ain't married. And adultery means you shouldn't be playing around, with, screwing around with somebody else other than your wife or your husband. Just in case a few of you just may not know what those two words mean. When you commit adultery, you're also committing adultery on God. You are breaking covenant. And anytime there's a breach of contract, you're putting yourself in a situation where the person who sealed the contract with you can either back out of the deal or require some things of you. And see, there's a side of God called wrath. And I always say this, you don't want to get on his bad side because he can inhale and you could drop like a fly. But because of his love, his mercy and his patient understanding, he allows us to get away with way more than his righteousness really allows for the kingdom. So if we don't get ourselves together, if you don't leave so-and-so alone and keep your hands and your stuff to yourself, and if you don't stop watching those, those videos, those, those X-rated things on YouTube and on, um, on TV and on, your, on the Internet, you know, wherever you're finding them, guess what, baby? You can't serve two masters. You either love one and hate. Here, I'm going to read what Jesus, now this is what Jesus said. I'm going to quote him. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Jesus says this. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Okay, look up mammon in the dictionary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's dealing with riches, covetousness, sinful desires. I mean, everything you're big and bad enough to do. Everything that lends and trends away from the ways of God. That, that's, my, that's my little uh, tidbit on, the, on that word. Try, do everything you can to walk the straight and narrow. Yeah, I know I'm human too. We've all fallen. We've all failed. We all fall short of the glory of God. But you don't lay there and set up camp. You don't say, oh, well, I blew it. Well, hey, you know, come on, baby. We just got to do this. You know, daddy's got knees. Oh, you know, hey, baby, Mama Sita got some knees. Come on here, take care of me. No, guess what? God, has enough grace to enable you to restrain your desires, to enable you to refrain from giving in. Yes, we all have given in. I'm not saying, I'm not talking like I'm big and bad and better than you and holier than thou, because I've fallen too. But you do not set up your address there. You don't decide, okay, well, I blew it, so that's it for me. I've, I, you know, hey. No, it should break your heart every time you mess up in any way. 
if you're watching X-rated, if you're going to movies and watching a whole bunch of violence and hateful type movies and where people are hurting people or or you're making fun, you're with your friends and you're making fun of people and you're hurting people. You are making out with the devil, baby. You are warming yourself by the devil's fire. You are flirting around, making out with the devil every time you yield yourself to sin. And here's the other part. He that knows to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. Okay. Now, I'm not going to go any further because I think you got the point. But God wants faithfulness. God wants holiness. He said, be ye holy, for I am holy. It wasn't a suggestion. It was a command. And you know when you're not doing right. You know. You know it doesn't sit right in your own spirit. You don't even have to be saved to know when you're doing wrong. So if you can know you're doing wrong and not be saved, how much more should your conscience be sensitized to right and wrong when you're committed to Jesus Christ, when you've accepted him in your heart and you're filled with the Holy Spirit? Think about it. Okay, I'm going to stop. But I just ask you, whatever you do, if you're having a hard time, if you're being tempted, remember God doesn't tempt us with evil. That's the devil. And when you yield, you're going to bed with the devil. So I ask you right now to please repent. Please turn around. Ask God to help you fight and resist. The scripture says if you resist the devil, he will flee. But you got to resist. You can't just give in at every little whim and every little desire. And, oh, baby, I just got to have you. Oh, man, look at that hunk. Oh, look at that fox. No, you don't have to give in every time. Do you hear me? Okay, I'm done. God bless you. And that's your lesson for this hour. There may be more later on. I'll see if the Lord leads. Good night.